Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's presentation. I'm Diane Okonski, President of the Icelandic National League of the United States, and I'm very happy you're able to join us today. Before we get started, I just have a couple of announcements. First of all, the uh, presentation is being recorded and will be available in a couple of days. In addition, as uh, attendees to the webinar, you are on mute. However, we do want to hear your questions. So please use the Q and A button uh, in the Zoom application. For most people, it's going to be down at the bottom of the screen, but if you are um, on a tablet or a smartphone, uh, you may need to uh, look in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, or you may even have to swipe to find it. But don't let that stop you. We will answer as many questions as we can uh, during our hour together. So today we're going to learn about the Leifur Erikson Foundation. It's an organization that I really hadn't heard much about. Um, however, in, prepar in preparing for the webinar today, um, I found out that it's got a really interesting history and the mission of the organization is very impressive. So I think we're going to have a great uh, presentation today from our presenters. And so just let me introduce them to you. Uh, Christine Ingolf's daughter is the chair of the board of trustees of the Leifer Erikson Foundation. She served as president of the University of Iceland, a professor of pharmaceutical services at the University of Iceland prior to becoming the president. In 2015 to 2017, she was a visiting professor at MIT in Boston and is currently the chair of the Lance Vitale University Hospital Advisory Board, the chair, the vice chair of the Gov Board of Governors for the University of Luxembourg, and a member of various other boards and organizations uh, dealing with education, healthcare, and innovation, both in Iceland and abroad. Joining her is Jennifer Graeburn, who is the chair of the Leifer Erikson Foundation Application Screening Committee. Jennifer was a 2013-2014 Leifer Erikson Scholar, during which time she attended the University of Iceland's Medieval Icelandic Studies MA program. Jennifer received her PhD in the History of Art and Architecture from the University of Virginia in 2016 and is currently the Director of Digital Scholarship and Public Services at Union, Union College in Schenectady, New York. Jennifer continues to research and teach on topics related to digital humanities and the medieval North Atlantic world. Jennifer, someday you're going to have to tell me what all of that means. Um, but Christine and Jennifer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your time with us. Christine, I think you're going to be starting us out, so I'll let you, I'll turn it over to you right now. Okay, thank you so much for your, for your kind introduction, uh, Diane. It's wonderful to be here. Um, and, and thank you all for, for sharing your time with us. Um, well, I say this evening because it's eight o'clock in the evening here, but I know that we are in, in a number of time zones here um, uh, in this webinar. Um, and we're really pleased to be able to introduce to you the uh, Labour Edickson found Foundation. Um, the format, as Diane says, is that I'll start with a short presentation of the foundation. And Jennifer is then going to tell you hands on about her own experience um, as a scholar uh, here in Iceland. Um, Diane asked me uh, before to say a few words about myself and my connections to the US and I'm, I'm of course delighted uh, to do that um, because I actually have quite strong connections to the US. Uh, when I was seven years old, a few years, not so many years ago, as you can see, um, we moved as a family from Iceland to the US. Um, we were based in Alexandria, Virginia, and uh, my father worked, he's a printer, he's 97 years old today, um, and he worked in the printing industry. He worked for the Washington Post and the International Monetary Fund in Washington. Um, and we were in the States until I was 14, then we moved back. I studied um, pharmaceutical sciences undergraduate in, in Iceland and I took my PhD in, in London. Um, eventually I became professor at the University of Iceland and then in 2005, 
I became president of the university and served for 10 years until 2015. And throughout my uh, years at the university as a professor, I had a lot of collaboration, a lot of research collaboration with the US. So I had lots of opportunities to go to the US. And of course, after becoming president of the university, the university as a whole had a lot of uh, connections and of special connections. Diana, I mentioned this because you are in, in Minnesota with, with the University of, of, of Minnesota. Um, and, um, and as Diane said, I lived in, in Boston for two years with my husband when I, when I stepped down as, as president. And um, I just love coming to the US. I feel so much at home. And the thing I always look most forward to is having pancakes for breakfast. That to me is a real treat. Um, now that's enough about me. Let's uh, turn our attention to the, to the Laver Erickson Foundation. And Diane, if you would change the slide, please. Can you bring us the next? Okay, thank you. Um, uh, you can go on to the next one if you would. Thank you. So, um, so the um, the purpose of the foundation is to promote um, collaboration relations between the two countries, the U.S. and Iceland, and this is done mainly by funding a graduate uh, fellowship exchange program for US students coming to Iceland and for Icelandic students coming to the US. Um, the foundation started awarding scholarships in 2005. And since then, the foundation has granted a total of $4 million in scholarships uh, to a total number of 130 students. Um, the scholarships can be up to $25,000. So you see, it's quite a, quite a generous uh, scholarship and, and considerably higher, for example, than the Fulbright scholarship. Um, many students tell us that the um, scholarships and the experience has had a tremendous impact on their, on their lives. And, um, and so um, that's why we're very interested in, in getting the word out and very, very happy to be able to share with you um, uh, some information on the foundation. Um, the scholarships, if, if we can have the next slide, the scholarships can, can be awarded in any discipline or field, natural sciences, health, art, often music, uh, cinema, um, engineering, social sciences, humanities. Um, applications are welcome from all different disciplines. And if we change again, um, we have recently announced 11 recipients for the academic year of 2021 to 22, uh, worth a total of $250,000 for US Iceland graduate research and, and, and study. And um, I thought I'd give you uh, an idea of the breadth of, of disciplines that are, are being supported this year. And so I thought I'd introduce you to a few beneficiaries um, and to start with three American students. Um, first of all, we have uh, Robin Barrow, who is a PhD student um, uh, in art history at the University of Pennsylvania. And she'll be working here in Iceland at the National Museum and also in, in the Arne Magnusson uh, Institute. And if we change the slide, we have Riley Book. She is a PhD student in environmental sciences at the University of Washington, uh, Wisconsin in, in Madison. She is going to study benthic algae in Miva, 
uh, in the north of Iceland. And she'll be hosted by the Niva uh, Research Institute and also uh, Polar University, the small agricultural university in the north. And then if we change again, we have Theodore Teichmann, who is a master's student in landscape architecture at the University of Chicago in Urbana. And he's interested in soil conservation. He'll be working with a number of institutes here, um, the Agricultural University at Kvanere in Borgarfjörður, um, the Soil Conser Conservation Service and the University of the Arts. And then to, to give you an idea of Icelandic students coming over, we have Hörður Helgason. He's going to be doing his PhD in civil engineering at the University of Washington in Seattle. And the next one is Njáll Skarpjönnsson. He's going to do a master's in computer science at Carnegie Mellon. And he's especially interested in artificial intelligence and deep learning. And the last example that I, these are, these are just examples. Um, the last example for a recipient of the scholarship from 444, 2021 to 22, uh, we have Guðni Ragnar Ragnarsdóttir, uh, who will be taking an LLM degree at Columbia Law School. So I hope these examples give you an idea of the kind of studies that are, are being supported. Um, and for those that are interested in applying, there's information on the website, um, uh, you know, general information, information on eligibility, support documents needed, and that sort of thing. Um, the exact deadline for um, the academic year of 2022-23 has not been decided, but it will be in November. And if we change again, um, the procedure for evaluation of the applications is in the hands of, like Diane mentioned before, a special screening committee uh, comprised of former scholars. And Jennifer uh, is currently chair of the committee. Um, I cannot end the presentation without telling you a little bit about the history because it really is a fascinating example i think of how um, a great idea is 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 born uh, how it is carried through against all odds it would seem and and how it results in in support and uh, life-changing experiences for a large number of students on both sides of the atlantic and if you could show us now a, a picture of um, Steingrimur Hermansson. Uh, Diane, thank you. This is, in fact, um, the gentleman who had the idea to do something uh, cool for the millennium uh, celebrations in, in, in 2000. Uh, Steingrimur had been prime minister twice and um, in Iceland and the director of the Central Bank of Iceland. And his idea was to commemorate the sailing of Leifur Eriksson um, 1000 years earlier to North America at around the year 1000. And, and so in the end, the Central Bank, if we have the next slide, please, um, the central bank in Iceland proposed that silver mint be struck and sold. Um, and Steingrimer took the idea to the US Congress and was successful. Um, they agreed um, and, and a commemorative coin act was, was passed. And the US mint in Philadelphia minted a, sil a silver uh, silver dollars, American dollars, and silver thousand Icelandic crown coins. And proceedings of the sales went to into the Leivir Eriksson Fund Foundation. Um, and another very important person in this saga, if we could have the last slide, is John Castine III. He is 
former president of the University of Virginia. And when Steinkrimer, after having talked to Congress successfully, um, he knocked on the door of the University of Virginia and um, asked John as president whether you, the University of Virginia would be interested in hosting the foundation. And John, as it happened, was professor of literature and very interested in me medieval history and literature. He said, yes, great idea, let's, let's do it. <laughs> and um, so the University of Virginia very kindly agreed to invest the proceedings along with their own endowment. And they have been extremely successful in their investments. And as for the Lever Edixon Foundation, um, has resulted in, as I said earlier, $4 million being, having, been, having already been, been awarded to students. And, and the endow endowment currently stands at $6.8 million. So I think that's just a fascinating, fascinating story and, and I wanted to share, share that with you and I'll be happy to answer any questions, but I'll give over. Shall I give over to you, Jennifer? Thank you, Christine, and thank you, Diane, and thank you to INLOS for inviting us to talk about the Leif Erikson Foundation. Let me pull up my slides real quickly. Okay, so one of my main aims uh, for this my part of the presentation is to focus on my particular experience with the Leif Erikson Foundation uh, as a scholar from 2013 to 2014, but then also to talk about uh, my experience and how the Leif Erikson Foundation has continued to play an important role on my professional and, and prefer, uh, personal life. life. Um, so again, I was studying at the University of Virginia at that time at the uh, master's level in uh, um, art and architecture, um, architectural history. So you'll see the University of Virginia's rotunda on the left. And this was the first time I had heard about the Leif Erikson Foundation. Uh, Christine outlined a little bit of that connection. And so when I found this opportunity, I was extremely excited to pursue it and ended up spending a year in Iceland uh, pursuing a second master's degree in medieval Icelandic studies at the University of Iceland, which you can see on the right. It's just a little bit of a back story about why I applied for the Leif Erikson Foundation scholarship and why going to Iceland was important for my career. I originally planned to study Anglo-Saxon metalwork when I attended um, the University of Virginia and very quickly became enamored with Norman architecture from England in particular. And in one of those rare moments of true serendipity of just browsing through the stacks, I found a book on this charming cathedral that you see on the right called St. Magnus Cathedral from Orkney Kirkwall. And one of the, the just real joys was discovering not the Norman history, but that the at that time, Orkney was run and this church was constructed by the earls of Orkney, which were very culturally and linguistically linked to the north. And this was an extremely exciting discovery and it introduced me for the first time to the Icelandic sagas and Orkney Inga saga, which you see on the left in particular, which has a lovely section that outlines why this church was constructed. And so I was really, again, fortunate um, during my master's degree to have a former scholar, uh, Christine Schott, present a special topics course on Old Icelandic language. And I had the chance to study a little bit on the culture and the history and the language of Iceland. And the more I learned, the more I realized I needed to learn more. And I applied for the Leif Erikson Foundation and successfully was awarded a scholarship to attend and learn more, especially about the language and the culture of that medieval North Sea world and the connections between Scandinavia and Iceland and even Northern Scotland. 
And so I attended, um, again, the University of Iceland, the Medieval Icelandic Studies program, which is a three term program. And it has a sister program called Viking and Medieval Norse. Um, it's also a master's program, which is a four term program. And this was really a, a pivotal moment. And I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that there's pre-Iceland and post-Iceland in terms of, of my own research interests. And this was really just a, a wonderful opportunity that exposed me to the scholars, the experts in the field, and got me in contact with people that I had never would have met um, previously and established a network of colleagues and future professionals, future academics um, that are still currently pursuing degrees or working in the field. And while I was there, we had a number of opportunities to do formal work together, formal academic work, um, as well as fun work. And so we have, for example, on the left, we've got the field trips uh, throughout Iceland where we got to visit the actual locations mentioned in the sagas. And here the sagas recounted as we visited the landscapes and looked over the mountains that were described. The chance to visit the Arne Magnuson Institute and look at either the folios or the manuscripts themselves. I also had the wonderful opportunity to present on my own research, again, looking at St. Magnus, Orkneyanga Saga, and the way that architecture is described in the sagas in the Old Icelandic at um, a conference in Lurwick in Scotland, in Shetland. But also we had a lot of fun as well. Um, one particular highlight was uh, getting my scuba diving license so that I could dive between the two tectonic plates in Iceland and the crystal clear waters of Silfra. And another real highlight, and I, I one I really want to focus on as, as representing the mission and the core values of the Leif Erikson Foundation, was a dinner where they invited anyone who was associated with or partners with or um, key stakeholders for the foundation to a dinner at Hotel Holt in Reykjavik during my first year. So former scholars, current scholars, um, the board of trustees, as well as um, some politicians all attended this wonderful dinner. And I remember sitting between the American ambassador to the United States on my right and the governor of Central Bank to my left and John Castine, who at the time was chair of the Leif Erikson Foundation board um, across from me. And that conversation that rose from, from that encounter was something that has stuck with me all these years later and really represented some of the diverse perspectives that we brought to the table and some of the friendship and collaborations and relationships that were forged as a result. And something that was a little bit unexpected, but something that again, that, that um, shows the way that even after the scholarship was done and after my time in Iceland was done, Iceland and the Leif Erikson Foundation continued to influence and provide opportunities for me professionally. And the following summer, I was uh, asked to join the Mon uh, Monasticism in Iceland project, which was led by my former professor of the program, St. Christian's Christiansdottir, uh, as we did some um, test digging and um, surveying work to try to identify sites where monasteries were situated within Iceland. And this was one of my first opportunities to experiment with digital humanities or digital techniques to study humanistic topics. In this case, processes to digitize in three dimensions um, some of the artwork and artifacts that we found. And even after um, my time in Iceland was formally done, um, Iceland has continued to play just a really pivotal role in my life, personally and professionally. And on the left, uh, you'll see a picture of my wedding photo with my husband where we were married um, at Budir in Iceland um, during the summer of, of 2015. In the summer of um, 2016 then, you'll see in the middle, I successfully defended my dissertation on St. Magnus, which pulled in a lot of my original research conducted while I was a scholar of the Leif Erikson Foundation, as well as incorporating some of the, the original research using the old Icelandic texts. And you'll see John Castine across the table from me, who as a result of some of our conversations from the dinners and other Leif Erikson opportunities was a member of my committee for my dissertation. And even now, I continue to teach courses on the Vikings and the medieval Norse. And you'll see to the right, um, I had one particular assignment for my students to explore a virtual reality longhouse. And you'll see one of my students with the, the headsets on, as well as um, in the background, the screen, you can see some of the shields on the wall. And this was a um, 
a model produced by Grinnell College um, and students at Grinnell College that we were able to have the students explore immersively as they were studying the Vikings. And finally, that leaves me to my current role as the Leif Erikson Foundation Screening Committee Chair. And I have been a member of the chair since 2017, and you'll see a board meeting on the right. And this has been one of the just most rewarding experiences um, professionally um, to read the applications every year and to help lead the scores and to help introduce the applicants to the board who vote then on the ultimate list of scholars awarded funding for the year. And it's something that um, I'll say we usually get about 30 applications uh, a year. And we're always completely blown away by the amount of uh, variety and the study that our scholars are engaged in, as well as just the, the academic success um, a lot of them have already seen and will continue to see as a result of their, their time traveling either to the US or to Iceland. And I've learned about everything from um, volcanoes to um, fish lice um, that can occur in fisheries as a result of these applications. And then the opportunity to meet our fellows in these dinners have been a really, um, again, wonderful opportunity to build these connections and to build these relationships that can continue on and on um, well after the term of the scholarship. And I will leave it with that. And I hope that we have questions or um, any discussion that um, anyone watching wants to bring up. Well, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, um, Christine, I'm, I'm curious, going back to the beginning of the Leifer Erickson Foundation, how is it, or even to the minting of the coin, how is it decided that the proceeds would go towards an exchange program. It seems like there would be a long list of, of programs and activities that would be in line for those programs. So how did it, how did they arrive at um, an exchange? Well, I, I, I think that I think that was the initial idea uh, that Stein Grimer had. That that would be a good way to you know enhance uh, collaboration between the two countries. He himself had spent time, he had studied in the US himself. And so I, I believe that that was his intention from the, from the beginning. Okay. But that he should be successful, you know, in, in, in going to US Congress and then to UVA. Um, it's just amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, regarding the scholarships, are there any um, uh, limitations on how the money can be used, or is the, the money, money just uh, here's $25,000 and go do your research? No, well, no, it has to be well, it has to be well documented how it's going to be used. And, and the students have to give, you know, um, reports uh, throughout their studies of how, the, how, the, how they are how they are doing with regard to this, their studies and how the money is being spent. So it's, it's it, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of money. And uh, so that's taken very seriously, both the initial plan, how the uh, funds are meant to be spent, and then also the sort of follow-up. Would you agree with that, Jen? Yeah, I was um, just going to add that we do ask for a budget with the application um, at the beginning. And what we're looking for is, is how the money will be spent. And are they asking for the full 25,000 or, or some smaller portion based on the size of the project? And, and we've seen um, everything from travel to lodging to equipment that's vital for the research um, wrapped under those uh, budgetary expenses. Okay. All right. Um, another a question has come in uh, regarding the um, awarding of the scholarships. Is it typically divided half and half between um, the U.S. and Iceland, or is it dependent upon the, uh, the uh, applications that come in? I can give a little bit more uh, background of sort of what the screening process looks like. Um, we get the applications um, in and um, the screeners, there are currently three of them. We have um, 
uh, two Icelandic former scholars who also read the applications. And we try to have a, a good breadth of experience. Um, my background being in the humanities, we also have law and uh, the sciences represented. And we each read the applications and score them uh, one to 100 without any sort of discussion up front, um, just to get the, the numbers, the average numbers between the scores. And we put those numbers in order and present them uh, to the board with an outline of, of what the projects are and some of our takeaways or thoughts on, on what the projects, um, what their goals are, but also their feasibility, um, how reasonable they are in terms of the budget. And then the board has the ultimate vote on the final scholars. And I, I will add that we don't, in, we don't have any sort of anticipated number of, of Icelanders or Americans, but almost every year that I've participated, we've had almost exactly 50-50 and it's just worked out that way um, in terms of, of the scores that make it to the, the top 10 or so. Okay. And so you're, you're typically awarding in the neighborhood of 10 scholarships a year then? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we've had another question come in um, from uh, Catherine, who is wondering whether or not veterinary service students are eligible for the program, or is it simply just for academic research? It's a good question. Um, I actually don't know the, the answer of that. Typically, any graduate work um, that facilitates and requires that exchange, um, so where that travel and that interaction between either Americans in Iceland or Icelanders are in America, as long as, as, long as that makes sense um, and as long as there's um, a clear reason for that exchange or research or coursework, um, all of those are, are usually open as long as it's a graduate program. Okay. And in our prep, one of the things we talked about is that um, these scholarships um, are available for all uh, universities in the U.S. as well as in Iceland. It's not just uh, a program between the University of Virginia and the um, University of Iceland. It's for all Icelandic universities and um, the majority of, of universities in the states. Correct, yeah. correct. It's good that you say that, Diane, because uh, indeed it is for any university in the, in the U.S. and any university in Iceland. And um, uh, but there is the, the historical connection to the University of Virginia, and there is uh, one uh, scholarship that's called the Robert Kellogg uh, Memorial Fellowship that is designated especially for students at the University of Virginia, be it American students studying there and wanting to do part of their studies in Iceland, or an Icelandic student coming to the University of Virginia. And are there any preferences um, given to the Western Icelanders, um, uh, or is it uh, is it open to any um, any student regardless of their of their descent? Yes, it's regardless. It's regardless of of of, of descent. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's open to, open to everybody. <laughs> And I, I will add that um, we we do see students who formally go and attend classes at another institution or pursue a, a graduate degree of some kind at an institution at the other country, but we'll also see um, affiliations or partnerships when there's just research components of work that's being done perhaps at, at their home um, institution, either in Iceland or the United States. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, now, Christine, this, uh, this program is really an important connection between the two, between the two countries. Um, are there any broader goals that are being met uh, with the international exchange? Are there any, any loftier aspirations? Well, we, we would, of course, like to see um, uh, We'd like to see uh, more applications and we'd like to be able to, in the future, award uh, more than 10 scholarships a year. That is something that, that, uh, that, that has been in, in discussion. And, um, but we'd really just, it's, 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 um, 
it's interesting that, you know, these are quite handsome scholarships, uh, you know, compared to what, what you can apply for. And for some reason, um, it's not like you, like you said before, it's not a very well-known foundation. So we are, we, that is one of, one of the things that we really want to get and do is to get the word out there because it really creates tremendous opportunities for, for people that, that are interested. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Jennifer, as you, as you are um, in this, uh, the selection committee now, are you, um, uh, what, are, what are your plans for the future? Are you going to stay with, uh, within the Leif and Erickson uh, Foundation? Are you uh, going to stay at, uh, at Union College? What, what are your plans? Question. COVID always throws a wrench in things as well, but I, I like to tell Christine and, and the board that they'll have me as long as they want me. Um, they'll, have to, they'll have to kick me out. Um, one of my favorite things about um, the board meetings, which COVID has unfortunately um, uh, prevented, is the board meetings. We usually have two per year, one in Iceland and, and one in the U.S., often in New York City. And we have a dinner for former fellows and current fellows um, and, again, partners where we can come and gather and share, um, build and, and to bolster those relationships. And those opportunities are, are really some of my most treasured memories. And so to resume those and, and to, to um, again, to keep them open to scholars and for scholars to be able to attend them, I think is, is something really special and something I'd love to see continue. Um, but again, just to, to reflect Christine's um, point, we'd love to see more applications. Um, we've seen a, a really wonderful selection of, of professional goals and academic backgrounds. And, and we would just love to, to see as many people um, apply as possible and to award as many scholarships as we can. We hope to, to have Jen as long as possible. <laughs> and, and Jen, how did you how did you get that position? How did you find out about that position? Um, it, it was a new position, actually. Um, uh, the board had decided that they would like to rethink um, and provide provide more input on on the applications. And um, I, I stayed involved with the Leif Erickson Foundation as much as I could after my scholarship. And having John on my uh, dissertation committee was was quite wonderful. Um, we also had uh, Don and Joan Fry, who were board members and also associated with the foundation. They attended my defense um, in support of my research and my former research as a scholar. And so staying in touch with them and continuing to go to those dinners, um, even when I wasn't uh, formally associated, was um, something that I, I think was just something I continued to want to do and I wouldn't leave them alone. <laughs> All right. Well, if anybody in the audience has any more questions, this is your time to get them in. Um, we uh, uh, wanna thank again, Christine and Jennifer for sharing your time with us today. Um, it's been just delightful to learn about the, uh, the Leifer Erickson Foundation and all the work that's being done there. Um, but before we go, I do have a couple of announcements. So again, you've got about two minutes to get your last questions in. Um, we are working on some additional programs for the summer and early fall. Uh, if you are interested in learning how to make mead or have questions about making mead, uh, we are working with a gentleman uh, named Brent Skarsgård, uh, who is from uh, Texas Nordic. Uh, who will be teaching us his, his, his techniques. His recipe is already out on the INL US website. And uh, uh, he's going to share a video with us on making meat and then answer, answer your questions. And we're hoping that's going to uh, occur somewhere late June, early July. We are also uh, working to get an update from Iceland's ambassador to the US, uh, Birgdi Sellert's daughter. When we first met her last year, she was just a couple months into her new position uh, and COVID was taking, taking hold. Now she's got another year under her belt. She's been through the closing of COVID due to COVID and the reopening of, because of uh, uh, COVID. 
uh, a new administration. So it will be very interesting to hear from her on, on uh, what her priorities and, and uh, perspectives are now that she's got another year under her belt. Uh, we're hoping that's going to occur sometime in late July or early August. We are um, still in conversation, so we'll be finalizing the dates and times. So stay tuned on the uh, events calendar on the INL US website. We'll have that information as well as we'll be sending out blogs announcing each of the uh, each of the programs. And then on September 1st, we actually do have a date and time for this. Uh, Nancy Marie Brown will be joining us in our author's corner to talk about her new book, The Real Valkyrie. Um, so I think that's going to be a very um, entertaining program. She was just here with us not long ago talking about Icelandic horses. Um, and now she's going to put her author's hat on and, and join us on September 1st. So um, again, if you have any questions, now's the time. We do have a thank you. Uh, for, for highlighting the wonderful opportunities. And uh, one person has said, I will be applying for 22. <laughs> Great. So, Fantastic. <laughs> I, know, I know there are two other people who are very, very interested. One, one's an American and one's an Icelander. So um, you've, you've probably got three coming in, um, in next, uh, next November. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Any, any closing words from, from either of you? Well, I just I just thought I'd mention because uh, Nancy Marie Brown is is has been taking uh, participating with you in the webinars uh, that she is actually on the board of trustees of the of the of the foundation. And um, and other than that, um, closing words for me um, only to say thank you, thank you for for your interest and thank you for giving us this opportunity. It really has been delightful. Yeah, thank you so much. And we really look forward to any applications or questions <laughs> after uh, the presentation. Feel free to reach out. Um, we're happy to answer questions or get you to the right person. Wonderful. Wonderful. Again, thank you. And thank you to our participants, our attendees today. Your support is very much appreciated. And uh, this ends our this ends our webinar. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>